right, guys, let's talk about bond enthalpy. And so let's define it first. Let me just kind of explain it. If I have a methane molecule, CH4, then there's a carbon bond, or sorry, a carbon atom in the middle bonded tetrahedrally to four hydrogens. All right, so if I want to break that bond there and I want to pull off that hydrogen, then it's gonna require the input of some energy. Some, there's gonna be an enthalpy change. And so for the uh, conversion of CH4 to CH3 uh, plus a hydrogen, uh, there's gonna be an enthalpy change there, okay? Some number, doesn't matter right now, okay? <clears throat> now, the remaining hydrogens that would be on there, you should be able to surmise that they will be held tighter uh, to the carbon than, the, than the, uh, they were when they were four of them because the uh, positive proton nuclear charge is uh, now being distributed over less hydrogen atoms. And so if I want to take off from that CH3 another um, hydrogen and turn it into a CH2, I want to break another bond, then uh, that is also going to have an enthalpy change. Let's do an arbitrary number in there. Let's say this was 10 units. You should suspect that this would be greater than 10, maybe 12, because, again, there's more uh, uh, nuclear charge, relative nuclear charge, flowing on the hydrogens. And then we can continue on to turn the CH2 into a CH plus H, have an enthalpy again. Relatively speaking, it's going to be higher. These numbers are rubbish. And then lastly, uh, we're going to pull off that last one and have an enthalpy change there again, relatively speaking, higher than the previous. Okay, so if I added up these numbers here, got a total in this case, that would be what? That would be 30, 42, 52. And then divided by four, that is the average bond enthalpy. The average bond enthalpy. And you need to know what average bond enthalpy is or kind of the basic idea of the average bond enthalpy. Um, each bond, uh, none of the bonds actually have whatever that average bond enthalpy is. But if we want to take off all of these hydrogens, you know, each one would be, you know, on the average, whatever the average would be. And so that's the average bond enthalpy. Know that it's not measured by simply breaking one bond off. It's measured by taking the total energy it took to remove all of the hydrogens and then dividing by the number of bonds that we broke. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If not, ask me in class. Okay, so uh, we can use bond enthalpies to determine the delta H of R as well. So we can figure out the delta H of reaction using bond enthalpies or average bond enthalpies. There are many ways that we're going to be learning how to figure out the enthalpy of reaction. And so yesterday or the day before, we did a Hess uh, law where we used the data from different reactions and sum those up to find the delta H of reaction. This is a second method. We'll be doing another one tomorrow. And so let's, uh, let's uh, figure out how this works. So let me give you some data first. Okay, so here are some average bond enthalpies. And this kind of data would most likely be given to you. Uh, it's in the data booklet. It's you know, going to be on tests or whatever. It will be given to you. So these are the average bond enthalpies of various bonds. So a carbon-carbon single bond has an average bond enthalpy of 348 uh, kilojoules per mole. Depends on the environment, but that's the average. So here is a reaction. Okay, and so here is uh, some data along with a chemical reaction. Let me move that up a little bit. There, a little bit closer. And so um, we need to use the data up there, and these are average bond enthalpies. Those are average bond enthalpies up here. And we're going to use that to solve the delta HR, the enthalpy of reaction for this equation, for this chemical reaction. And so this is where uh, being able to draw your molecules is going to come in real handy. And so, because you need to either be able to recognize it or draw it out one or the other. And so let's look at what we got here. We have an ethane molecule, C2H6. An oxygen molecule, actually we have three and a half oxygen molecules, uh, 
CO2s and waters. Okay, and we have to break bonds. So on the left side, what we're going to do is we're going to break bonds. We're going to break these apart all the way down. On the right side, we're going to make bonds. Okay, now, new little information here in case you don't know this already. Breaking bonds requires energy. You have to put energy in to break them. Breaking bonds is endothermic. Energy goes in. The delta H is positive. You must put energy in. Make bonds is exothermic. The delta H is negative. So you need to recognize that fact. So now, what are we going to break over here? Well, we have a CC bond that we need to break, a C carbon carbon single bond to break. So look up here at the bond enthalpies. It's going to take 348 to break the CC bond. Now we also over here have a whole bunch of CH bonds. How many CH bonds do we have to break? There are six of them there. So we're going to take six CH bonds and we're going to break those. So six, each one is 412 kilojoules per mole. So six times 412 kilojoules per mole to break those bonds. And then we have the OO bond and the OO bond is 496. But there are three and a half of them. So we need to multiply that by three and a half. Okay, 3.5, put a point there. All right, so all of this energy to break all of these bonds, that has to go into it. That's positive uh, enthalpy changes. So calculate that out. And that is 4,556. And that's positive. And it's kilojoules per moles or unit. So that energy goes in. Okay, over here on this side, we need to make bonds. So we need to make CO bonds. So CO bonds are four, 743 is for a CO bond to make, 743. Now how many CO bonds, CO double bonds are we gonna make? Well, there's one here and there's one here. So that's two, but we're doing two of these molecules, right? So we're going to make four of them. So multiply that by four. And over here, we're going to make OH bonds. One here, one there. That's two. We're going to do three of these molecules. So three times two, there's going to be six OH bonds made. So OH is 463. So add those up, and you get 5750. Remembering that that's negative because we're making the bonds, okay? Now what you're going to do is you're going to take these two numbers, add them together, making sure that you have the signs correctly. You just add them once you have the signs correct. And that gets you a delta HR of negative 1194 kilojoules per mole, okay? So that is another technique of figuring out the delta H of reaction using the average bond enthalpies.